بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره In the previous session, in the second sermon, I mentioned what are the ways to attract ours to our others to our school to our madhab to our tradition and mentioned that when it comes to the system of belief and doctrine and ideology shia islam is number one and i don't say this emotionally out of emotion but this is out of research and intellectual conviction because everything we say has roots in the Qur'an. It's not strange to the Qur'an or the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad So I mentioned areas that we have to work on them because we are delinquent. When it comes to practicing Islam, we are delinquent. We are behind. And I mentioned four areas Last week, I'm going to mention two more areas this week and another two next week, inshallah. The first area we have to work on our salat. You cannot survive in the akhirah if your salat is broken here. Sometimes your khums is broken, fasting is broken, they can fix it there. But when the salat is broken, as salatu amudu deen. In qobilat qobila ma siwaha wa in ruddat rudda ma siwa. It's the foundation of faith. If your salat is accepted, it's like the major. If your major is good, you did well in the major, then the supplementary subjects are not very important. You're going to pass them too. If the salat is accepted, other a'mals are going to be accepted. But if the salat is rejected, Others are going to be rejected too. Take care of your salat. Our leader, who is our leader? Contemporary leader, huh? Not very old leader. Huh? Al Imam al Sadiq. The founder of the Ja'fari tradition is Al Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq. At his deathbed, he says, لا تنال شفاعتنا يوم القيامة مستخفا بصلاته. If you take your salat lightly, you are excluded from our shafa'ah. Don't look up for my shafa'ah on the day of judgment. Don't look up to my shafa'ah. So take your salat seriously. We the Shia, I say that again and again very clearly. Sometimes we take the salat lightly. Sometimes we are behind, behind others. When it comes to salat, we are behind others. We don't take care of the nawafil. We enter the masjid, we greet each other, we forget about tahiyyat al masjid. This is the simplest thing you can do. Two salat, two rak'ah tahiyyat. It is going to be a res re reserved for you on the day of judgment. So this is number one. Number two, take care of the masjid. Masjid is the most important institution in Islam. The most important foundation. Masjid is more important than senior center, than youth center, than Husseiniyah, than this and that. The masjid, we have to 
promote the masjid. We have to build. If you build in your village, build a mosque. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدٍ The mosque is the mother institution of others. Others are furu' branches. The masjid is the asl. So take care of the masjid. Adab al-masjid. Respect the masjid. Promote the mosque. Respect the mosque. Mosque has adab. Adab al-masajid. And I've mentioned adab al-masajid so many times. No gossiping, no chatting. We can chat outside, but in the masjid, wala dhikrullahi akbar. This is a place, a spiritual place, sacred place. No conflict in the masjid with others. Show your love, show your respect, show your honor to the masjid. No discrimination in the masjid. In Islam, we don't, we don't have a mosque only for the black, mosque only for the rich. I went to an African country a month ago. I was there. Some people complained to me. They said, we are black. They don't allow us to go into this mosque because we are black, because we are not part of them. This is a reality. I saw it with my eyes. This is not a mosque. This is a national club. Call it club, Nadi, and Juman Fulan. Choose a name, but don't call it because the mosque is the house of God, opened for all. It's open for Muslims and non-Muslims, for Shias and Sunnis and atheists and Christians. Whoever wants to come to the house of God, ahla wa sallam, don't shut the door. This is one of the manners of respecting the mosque. Don't make it an inclusive club. It's not a club. It's an open house, open shelter. People come here to find some peace, tranquility, to find some attention, some respect, some love, some help. This is what you have to provide in the masjid. We have to take care of the masjid. This is number two. What was number three? Beside the masjid, what did I say? Do you remember my friends? I don't remember myself. <laughs> it is to take care of this book. Again, no salvation without respecting and exercising and implementing this holy book. Some of the Shia put the dua before the Quran. You are wrong, my friends. Dua is important. Dua is very important. I love the dua myself, but I don't put it number one and Quran number two. This is number one. Read the Quran every day. Keep it on your desk, in your car, in your room, in your office, in your bedroom. Wherever you have a space, keep this book and read it. This is the main source of inspiration. Whatever we have in the dua, whatever sentence, bring me any dua, whatever sentence you have, it stems from this book, it comes from this book, the knowledge of the Quran. Ahlul Bayt, when they produced Imam Ali, when he produced Dua Kumail, where did he learn the Dua from? Where? From a school, from a college? No, from this book, from the Holy Quran. So put the Quran number one. Exchange gifts. When you take a gift to someone, give him a copy of the Quran. In America, give him the translation. There are beautiful translations that came out recently. Give them a copy of the Quran. So this is number three. And number four, Sha'air. Sha'air al Hussein are sacred, but we have to be moderate and reasonable about them. We should not defeat the purpose. We should not in insult Imam Hussein through some of the Sha'air. I don't say all, but some of them, they insult Imam Hussein. They do injustice to his cause. They don't help Shia Islam. They don't help Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. We have to be reasonable and rational, not emotional. Don't be emotional. Imam Hussein wants you to help his cause. Imam Hussein is gharib. Nobody took care of him. He stood alone in the desert of Karbala. He wants you to introduce him to the world through rationality, through logic. Introduce the message of Imam Hussein. The akhlaq, the manners of Imam Hussein, ma'arifu ahlil bayt. We are not doing enough to introduce the ma'arif, the knowledge, the manner, the, the tradition of ahlil bayt. We focus only on sha'air, sha'air, sha'air. Not only others are not going to benefit, our young generation is leaving Islam because of some of these sha'air. 
So don't do that. Don't be emotional. Don't tell me I used to do this in my village in Pakistan, in Iran, in Iraq. Your village is respected. You are in Orange County. You are in America. You are in a place two days ago in this mosque. We had several rabbis on Wednesday here, here in this mosque. Several uh, bishops, several priests, several pastors from all other, on this podium two days ago, a, a Sikh, Sikh Imam, not Imam, what they call him in his tradition. Sikh leader stood and he gave a speech. So your mosque is open for other religions. You are not living only within your own people. This is back home, yes. Back home you are free. But this is a new front, new frontiers for Islam here. We have to consider the time and the environment. And who's listening to me? Who's coming to my mosque? I'm endowed with this responsibility to transfer my Islam to others, not just to keep it to myself. Yes, if I am selfish, I keep it to myself. I don't care about what people say, how they judge me. I don't care. But Islam, Allah says, you have to propagate my religion, transfer it to others. Bil hikmati wal mawidati al-hasana. Bil hikmat. This is what Imam Hussein wants from you. Be a good father. Be a good family man, be a good mother, be a good citizen in the community, be a good member in the community. Some of you, some of you here in this community are dearer to me than my own children. Though there is no connection, no blood relationship between me and you. But some of you, because of your dedication, because of your true love to Imam Hussein, you love Imam Hussein the way he wants you to love him, not the way you want to love him. This is the difference. This is the difference. We have to follow him and follow God the way they want us to follow. Not that I draw a map for myself and I say, because I love this, this is selfishness. I should ask God, what do you want me to do for you? Imam Hussein, how can I help you in America? God put me in this country. How can I serve your cause? How can I introduce you to others, to mankind? Don't keep him in your circle. Don't do injustice to Imam Hussein. Yes, my friends, believe me, if I take my eyes out and give it to Imam Hussein, I did not do enough for him. If I take my heart out of my chest and give it to him, still I did not do enough for him. It's not about what you give. It's about how and why you are giving this. Are you helping the cause of Imam Hussein or you, or you are further damaging it? We should not damage it. So this is point number four of last week. Today, I would add one more point and I conclude. Some, and I have to be just to say some, sometimes very few, sometimes 1%, less than 1%, but those less than 1% are very loud, are very loud, and then they influence the whole community. Some in the community, when you look at them, they speak on behalf of Imam al-Zaman, Imam Sahib al-Asri al-Zaman. But they don't represent him very well. Some people portray themselves as if they have, they have gotten the franchise of Imam al-Zaman. Huh? And the franchise is only for them. They are the only representatives. They speak on his behalf. They contact him they, as if they have a hotline with him. This is not good. This is not good. This is wrong. This is wrong. This destroys the mad madhab. This drives scores of people away from the madhab. Sometimes someone does mutajara business, drug trafficking. He makes his money from drugs. Sometimes sex trafficking, sometimes tobacco trafficking, let's say. But when someone does tijara in the deen, when he uses the deen as a business, this is very dangerous. This is very dangerous because he inflicts damage not only on himself, on the entire deen, the entire community. He does injustice to the entire community. Imam al-Zaman is our imam. He has equal access. The more you are committed, the more you have access to him. Imam Zaman does not want you to wear amama to have access to him. He doesn't want it. 
He doesn't even want you to, to, to have a specific language. All what he asks you to be sincere, to have ikhlas in your life. The more ikhlas you have, the more dedication, the more service for the sake of God, the more access you have to him. So don't allow some people to be the spokesperson of Imam Zaman. Some of them are liars. Some of them are liars. They are taking advantage of some naive people. And we also should not be naive. A Shia Muslims should not be naive or simple-minded. We have to educate ourselves. We should not believe every story which is being told by this person and that person. We have to respect Imam Sahib al-Zaman. Yes, he's there, he's hidden. Some people definitely have access to him, but nobody possesses the franchise of Imam al-Zaman. Imam al-Zaman does not have a specific agent in the community that you have to go through him. He doesn't do that. So this is one of the things that we have to realize about, about our Imam. And as I said, many people are disillusioned by faith and religion, not because of religion itself, but because those who say we represent religion. This is the problem. Some of them are scholars, some of them are non-scholars. Imam al-Zaman has open access to anyone. A scholar, maybe a marja cannot see Imam al-Zaman, but maybe an old lady, poor lady, who does not have food to eat, she can have access to him. This is how it works. It all depends on, the, on your heart, on your dedication, on your ikhlas, on your connection to God and the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. And inshallah, we're going to discuss more of these things in the upcoming weeks. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين ووحد كلمة المؤمنين على الخير والبر والصلاح والتقوى يا أرحم الراحمين وعجل في فرج إمامنا وقائدنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد